right. Good evening. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Spirit of Fire at Home. I'm Pastor Mike May here in the great city of Richmond, Virginia. We want to welcome everybody to our online broadcast. We just thank you for joining and tuning in tonight. Uh, we don't believe, as we always say, it's by chance that you're here, but we do believe that there will be something that will be shared that will be a blessing to your life. So on behalf of my wife, Pastor Raquel, and myself, we just want to say welcome to everybody. Um, go ahead, click your shares, your likes, set your watch parties up. Uh, share this with as many people as possible. Uh, we're going to continue dealing with extreme faith. Um, I'm going to teach a little bit tonight. Um, this past Sunday, um, as I began to minister, I kind of hit a trail and just went with it. And I didn't necessarily continue with the steps of developing your high, a high level of faith. Um, but tonight, I'm kind of going to break it down a little bit more for you and deal with at least steps four and five uh, tonight. So we want to at least get into that. So let's go ahead and have a word of prayer. Father, we just thank you for this, another opportunity to minister to these, your precious sheep. I thank you that revelation knowledge of your word will flow freely from heaven uninterrupted and unhindered by any satanic or demonic force. None of me, all of you. Holy Spirit, speak to my vocal cords, think to my mind to bring wisdom, knowledge, and good understanding of the Word of God. We do approach your holy written word reverently. Thank you that every ear is anointed to hear, every heart open is open and ready to receive the engrafted Word of God, which is able to save our souls. Uh, we just thank you and we bless you for it. Father, I also ask right now, and Holy Spirit, I acknowledge you, as a great teacher and a comforter, the one ready to give peace, I ask for the anointing of the teacher to bring knowledge and understanding and counsel and wisdom, to bring again to break down the, the truths of your word with simplicity and understanding so that it can be understood and applied effectively in the lives of your people. And so we thank you that their worlds are changed by the word of God. We thank you and we cover the gifts of the spirit to be in operation and demonstration as needed. And so, Father, we give you glory, we give you praise, and we give you honor for it now. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. So we um, I always like to do a quick recap. Um, this uh, Today, we're just going to talk about the different facets of the different steps of developing a high level of faith and dealing with extreme faith. We've been talking about faith that exists at a high level, radical type of faith, us believing above and beyond. There's a shift that I believe is taking place just in the earth and the body. And it's time to, to move different. It's time to shift. It's time to think different. It's time to think greater. Um, I heard one preacher say it like this. You live at the level that you eat. If you want to go to another level, you got to eat at another level. And so faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. And so God wants us to produce boldness. He wants us to possess this boldness to step out on faith, to do things that's been in us all along, to do. And he's created us, created us to do. And so now is the time to get this thing done, to believe for radical change and transformation. And so when we talk about this, it means exceeding the ordinary, the usual or the expected. What's been the ordinary? What's been the usual for your life? It's time to just shift things around. It's time to cause things to become different. You can't be in complacency. And there's one thing to be content, to walk in contentment, meaning having the right attitude while you're at the current state that you're in, knowing that it won't always be like that, knowing that you're planning on things changing, knowing that you're doing things, you're moving different so that things are going to change. So you still have the right attitude. So having the right attitude, maybe in the car that you drive and knowing that, hey, it may not be what you always wanted, but right now you're thankful that you have the transportation to get to and fro to do what you need to do. But you're believing for better because God said he wants you to ride prosperously. So whether you're in the apartment or staying with somebody else and you believing for the new home, listen, be thankful, be grateful for what God has done for you. Be grateful for what you have, but then take care of it. But also at the same time, start making moves for greater. Start making moves to increase. So God wants you to begin to move now. And you're going to begin to move at the level of your belief. And so we want to get your believing up. And so now stepping out, breaking out of the norm, getting yourself exposed to new areas and the new things. OK, so with that, we talked about number one in developing this type of faith. We talked about the integrity of the word of God, that you first need to understand that um, the word of God is actually what it declares itself to be. Because if you don't believe the word, none of this stuff matters. Because if you don't believe that God is who he says he is, because it says them that come to God without faith is impossible 
to please God because they that come to God must believe that he is and that he is a reward of them that diligently seek him. And so if you don't really trust who God is, then you don't trust his word because God and his word are one. God's will and his word are one. When God expresses his will, he expresses his will through his word and also by his spirit. And so we need to be students of the word of God. We need to understand how to rightly divide the word of God so that we can begin to apply it to our everyday life. So we want to be mindful of that. And so realizing that God's word is God breathed. I've been hearing more and more about people complaining about the Bible, you know, Christianity being a white man's religion or because people using it to um, enslave people and because people misconstrued text that sometimes people just allow what some bad people did with the word of God now cause you to think that the word of God in and of itself is not authentic, is not true, is not God breathed. And so we want to make sure that we begin to understand certain things. That's why in all you're getting, get understanding. Okay. And so now you got to trust that when you take God's word and you meditate on it and you get it in you, you're going to start believing it. You're going to start acting out on it. You're going to start seeing things change in your life. And so now we want to understand, number two, our redemption in Christ, that we've been redeemed from the authority of Satan by the blood of Jesus. So Satan has no dominion, no power, no legal right over us. So the devil can't make you do anything. So now we have authority over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt us. All right. The blood of Jesus is the basis of our victory because of what Jesus did, the shedding of his blood. Without the shedding of his blood, there is no remission or taking away of sin. And so now we want to God wants us to add our testimony or our confession to what the blood has done. For we overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. So now we want to make sure that we stand our ground when Satan tries to come because he's the God little G of this earth system. But Jesus came and caused us to be raised up together with him in heavenly places, seated at the right hand of the father. We are part of the body of Christ. We receive the spirit of adoption whereby we can cry, Abba, father, or God, our daddy. But so now you need to understand some things. Even in the book of Galatians chapter five and verse one, it talks about uh, a child um, differs nothing from a servant, though he be heir of all. And so you can have a child that's an heir, but then if they, because of their childish behavior and ways, they've not matured enough to now take on the responsibility of what that heir, um, the, the uh, inheritance um, is there for them. And so now they said they're under tutors and governors until the appointed time, talking about really the law and grace. And so people understand that when you begin to mature in the things of God, you begin to put on the things of God. You begin to walk different. You begin to think different. The apostle Paul says, should I continue to preach to you the elementary things of God's word? The, the, it's almost like the, the base level things. He says, listen, we need to start moving on to some other things because we need to become proficient in these areas. We need to become proficient in walking by faith, proficient in knowing how to function and move in the spirit, proficient of what it means of who the Holy Spirit is and his role in our lives proficient in the doctrines of Christ, proficient in these things. And so we want to make sure that we understand that the kingdom of God is run by the law of faith. The law of faith is the currency of the kingdom. We receive everything that grace has made available unto us. Grace makes it, faith takes it. In other words, through God's unmerited, unearned, undeserved favor, everything that pertains to life and godliness has been released and re revealed to us but now to bring it from the spiritual to the natural, we got to now apply our faith. And then the Bible says faith without works is dead, being left alone. So there has to be corresponding action to what we're believing. So we want to understand that Satan has no rule and authority. I'm working on a message now that God just started dealing with me, talking to me about today that I was going to preach it tonight, but I'm going to um, share it in the near future um, of just even um, the temptations and the, uh, the different things that Jesus went through in the wilderness and understanding how that applies to us in our everyday life and how God wants to settle some things so that you can graduate into your new season because it's time. It's time for you to graduate. You've been in high, you've been, some, some people have been in elementary school too long. You know, some people have been in middle school, been in high school too long. It's time to graduate. You don't want to be a super senior. You don't want to be there just hanging around constantly failing tests 
because you're not applying the word to your life and overcoming certain things. God's saying it's time to graduate. It's time to push through. It's time to move forward. It's time to stop going around the same mountain over and over again. It's time for you to finally conquer the thing that's been conquering you all of this time. And so your faith has to be involved with it. Okay. So now number three, the third thing we dealt with is the reality of the new creation, understanding that we're new creatures in Christ. Old things are passed away. All things are become new. All of this stuff affects your faith. If you don't realize who you are, it will affect how you believe. It will affect how you believe. So now when you have this boldness as a new creation that you realize that your sin has been dealt with, you have um, authority over it, that you're not worried about falling back and backsliding, that you're going to be bold and stepping forth in your faith, that you're going to be bold and going before God, asking him for big stuff, believing for big stuff because you know you serve a big God and he created you with the capacity to receive everything that he provided. That's good right there. God created you with the capacity to receive everything that he created for you, um, that he provided for you. But now from a mental standpoint, um, he wants you to mentally be prepared for it as well as spiritually prepared and naturally prepared. And so he wants you to expand your capacity. He wants us to expand our capacity, to expand our exposure to receive as well. And so that means transforming things around you, getting things ready, cleaning out stuff, putting in new things. God is saying, get rid of some of the old so that the, there's room for the new. You got to be ready for it now. Okay. And so with this reality of the new creation, one of the key things in this that, I, that we begin to teach is that God loves us with the same love that he loves Jesus with. And you're going to have to be confident in God's love for you so that you understand that God loves you unconditionally. And because God loves you, he's always there for you. He'll never leave you. He'll never forsake you. He says he'll be there to the ends of the earth. So you got to be confident in that, that God loves me. Amen. Excuse me. So now number four, I'm going to jump into this tonight. Number four, um, and I'll kind of camp out here at four and five a little bit tonight, is that number four is our fellowship with the Father. We got to spend time with God. We got to spend time with him. And so now the very heart or reason for redemption is fellowship. The reason why he came to redeem us back to himself, to reconcile man back to himself. He wants fellowship with us. He's established relationship in the sense of when we get born again, we receive, like I said before, the spirit of adoption, the scripture says, whereby we can cry, Abba, Father. So now, okay, we accept Christ. We're a part of the body of Christ. God is our father. Okay. But before then he was just, he was, watch this. He was our creator, but the fatherhood relationship wasn't intact. How can I say that? Scripture talks about it in the New Testament. He was talking to the Pharisees and Sadducees, and he told them this. He says, you are of your father, the devil. And so why would he tell them this? In relation to this, because you're spiritually dead. He says, now those who are spiritually alive have now received the spirit of adoption. And so with that, you're an heir of God. You're joint heirs with Jesus Christ. So that means everything Jesus has a right to, you have a right to. Isn't that what a joint heir is? That anybody that's a joint heir has equal rights and privileges? Because watch this, you are part of the body of Christ. So because we're a part of the body of Christ, we have what Christ has. He's the head, we're the body. Think about it. Whatever the head has, the body has. Listen, if you're looking at me and you see my head, you don't see my body over somewhere else. No, it's all connected together. What the head has a right to, the body has a right to. So you got to remember that. You have to remember that. This is important what you understand and who you are. You are part of the body of Christ. So when Satan sees you, he sees Jesus because we're immersed in him. But you got to see yourself like that. You have to see yourself as a king and a priest. You have to see yourself as an ambassador. You have to believe that you have authority over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. And so this comes, the confidence comes through time spent with God. I remember um, when I graduated high school, that was the time where I just really sought God. It was just like me and God, man. I'm telling you, 
and I was so hungry for him that God began to manifest himself to me. Things begin to happen in my life. I begin to function and flow in the spirit in ways that I never had before. God starts showing me himself, his nature, his character. I started listening and hearing his voice better. Um, the, it was sharper. My hearing was sharper. And so my obedience was better. Um, even though God was taking me through things and I was getting delivered and freed from things that I mean, I'm telling you from obeying him with fasting was concerned to talking to people about things to correcting issues to, to sowing seeds to stepping out to do whatever. I'm telling you, that was the time. It was that fellowship time with God. I love spending time with God. See, that's why, too, when you start spending time with him, you get to know him just like anybody else. The only way you get to know a person is by spending quality time with them, talking to them, learning about them, knowing their attributes, knowing their ways. See, the children of Israel knew God's acts, but the Bible says Moses knew his ways. See, that was a difference. Moses knew how he functioned. Moses knew how he flowed and how he moved. He revealed himself to Moses. And so we want God to reveal himself to us to assist us and to help us in this thing, in this life. Now, in 1 Corinthians um, 1 and 9, the Amplified Version says it like this. God is faithful. He's reliable, trustworthy, and therefore ever true to his promise. And he can be depended on. By him, you were called into companionship and participation with his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Just think about this. God is faithful. God is reliable. God is trustworthy and therefore ever true to his promise. And he can be dependent upon. See, you know, we hear people say stuff like, you know, you can't trust me, but you can always trust God. But I understand sometimes you're like, well, I can't see God, you know? So how is it? See, this is where your faith, see you developing, it's going to require faith and your faith is going to grow. And, and believing a God you can't physically see right now, but you believe he is, he exists. You believe that he is blessed are those that believe and have not seen. There are people who've experienced heaven and come back to share testimony where the Lord has even visited people and opened up their eyes and they had open visions and things of that nature. But maybe you're a person you've never seen any of these things. You've never experienced it. And you're just going by the word. This is why the word is the first thing. You're just going by the word. That's good, God. You're just going by what you've been told and what you've been taught. So now you got to believe it. See, blessed are those that believe and have not seen. Empowered to prosper and have success. So God needs your faith involved in this thing. And the more time you spend, you become confident. And when you hear that voice, that still small voice, that prompting, that knowing on the inside, that voice that drew you to get born again, that same voice that told you to step out to do this, that, or the third. You know, some of you have had these experiences. Some of you may not have had these experiences just yet, but you got to know that, wait a minute, the same God. Now, let's see, this is why too faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word. That's why it has to be preached. It has to be taught so that faith can come to you to believe, to start stepping out and doing this stuff. Faith to know how to go to God. Faith in prayer. Faith in this fellowship. And now in John chapter 1, um, the first John, first John chapter 1, verses 3 and 4, in the New Living Translation. First John um, chapter 1, verse 3 and 4. It says this, we proclaim to you that we ourselves have actually seen and heard so that you may have fellowship with us. And our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. We are writing these things so that you may fully share our joy. But if we are living in the light as God is in the light, then we have fellowship with each other and the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. Okay, so now the highest honor that God has given us, that the father has given us, is us having joint fellowship with him, with his son, and with the Holy Spirit, and carrying out his dream for redemption for the human race. God wants all of mankind to be redeemed, all of mankind to accept the redemptive work of Christ. Christ has already now died for the sins of the world. Men just have to accept it. Women have to accept it. Children have to accept it. We just have to accept what Jesus has done. 
All right. Now watch this. And I like this part. And it was something I saw here in verse three. Um, it says, we proclaim to you that we ourselves have actually seen and heard so that you may have fellowship with us. And so it's like they're telling the people we've had experience with this God. We've had experience with the father. So we're telling you about the experiences that we had so that you can come on into the fellowship so that now we want to connect you to him so that you can have these experiences with him. I can't tell you the number of times I heard the word as a teenager. I heard the word, but watch this. I saw outward demonstrations of the spirit. I saw outward manifestations of God manifesting through healings and deliverances and seeing things. It was like, wait a minute, man. And see, this is what it does. This is what the gifts of the spirit are really for. Even scripture talks about it. They're really for those from the outside to, in other words, to woo you in, to show you and to demonstrate who God is. That's why we talked about with tongues, with interpretation. Somebody comes into a service and now you begin to speak and show the secret things of their heart. And it'll cause them to say, what must I do to be saved? You can only know this by God you know, seeing God's power manifest. And so we need to begin to function in this to show people who God is, to introduce him, um, them to him. And so say, hey, we function like this because we walk in the light. We spend time with him. See, that's how the anointing increase on my life is by spending time with him. Nobody could do it for me. Do time in praying in the spirit. Oh man, enormous time in worshiping. I used to love to worship God, still do. But it's like sometimes you get so caught up in things, prayer, worship, the word, prayer, worship, the word, acting out on the things I was hearing him tell me to do and seeing the results of me doing those things and seeing the manifestation of the obedience that I had behind the word that he told me. And so that grew my relationship. And so now it caused a greater hunger because when you start seeing this stuff work, man, listen, even for a little kid, even for a young adult, it's like, man, I'm telling you, it begins to draw you. You want to know more. You want to hear more. You want to understand more. I mean, I mean, it was just a hunger for God. That's all I can say. And I'm glad that I sought him. I'm glad that I put away things. See, fellowship with him because he's a holy God. When you start having fellowship with God, there are certain things you're going to instantly put off because you cannot come into the presence of a holy God and then keep going back to unholy things because something changes in you. Something happens. Or even if you go back, something is different. It's different because when you experience light and you get back around darkness, you're more sensitive to it. That comes from fellowship. I give this account all the time when um, I was a young adult and, you know, God will always tell, I mean, it was just during this time, this stage in my life, it was like, I was always fasting. God was leading me to fast. The spirit of God would tell me to like go on three day fast, maybe one day or whatever, spend time with him because I was gaining control of certain things and appetites and all of that stuff. And so this one time, this one stretch, I don't even know how long it was. I don't even remember. Um, he told me, I want you to stop looking at television. So I had to fast from television for a while. And he says, I want to be the first person that you talk to in the morning, last one you talk to at night. And so I would get up. I think at this time we may have been having corporate prayer at our church that we were part of back then. And so I'd get up, go to corporate prayer, you know, take my shower, do everything, go to church, uh, pray, um, then go to work. And I'm at work. And then when I leave work, then I end up going back to church because I had different responsibilities. I might have been in school at that time there in uh, Bible Institute, but then come home and literally I would not cut on the television. So I'll do whatever it is I would do, eat dinner, all that kind of stuff, go to sleep, you know, or pray before going to bed, spend time with God, put on worship music, maybe read the word, whatever it was. But God was just he was kind of cleansing certain, certain things out of me certain tastes, certain appetites. It was almost like that's what he was doing. That's what that fellowship does is introducing you to light that helps to flush out darkness because there was so much darkness that I had been ob observing and bringing in even into my mind through what I was watching and even with things that I listened to and stuff like that. And so during this time, it was like it was nothing really because I wasn't watching anything. It wasn't anything like darkness flooding into me. It was light, constant light. 
<laughs> constant flushing of the word, the spirit of God. And so I remember when I came off the fast, I went to a video store back then um, to get a movie or something. And I remember having this experience that I felt so nauseous. And I realized the area that I was near was the horror section, like row of horror section. And back then they had, they would have this room with the door closed that had the pornography back there. And I could sense the spirits on the movies. I could literally, and it was like, it made me sick. I was so nauseous. It was like, man, this, it was the craziest feeling I'd ever had. I had never experienced that before. But what happened is and the same thing. Like if you eat food, when you, when you, when you're detoxing your body and you get certain things out and you don't eat things for a long period of time and you reintroduce it to your body, that your body even starts rejecting it because it's not used to it. You're getting things cleansed out and you can eat something that's greasy and you not haven't been eating greasy foods and stuff like that. That's why when people go on fast, especially the long fast, and then depending on the type of fast you go on, you got to be mindful how you reintroduce food to your body because your body has now adjusted. And so your spirit, man, your mind, your soul can get adjusted. And when you're not used to hearing things or seeing stuff, and now you just been spending time with God, and now it comes back in, it's a difference, man. This is why I tell people, and I tell them this, I'm not going to harp on you and keep beating you up about, okay, now scripture tells us that certain things, light has no fellowship with darkness, okay? And so, but you're going to know the difference. That's why I tell people, okay, it's almost like you tell people they know what's right to eat. But it's still up to you to choose what you eat. Now, I'm not going to beat you up constantly because you're not eating the right thing. But at the same time, you know. Now, it's my job to teach you what's the right thing to eat, the right thing to do. Because out of God's word, I'm a teacher of the word of God. That's, that's my job. As a preacher of the gospel, it's to preach this word. And to now share it to the best of my understanding and ability. But now it's your job to now take what's been shared, eat it, meditate on it, and begin to apply it to your life. So, you know, whether you go see this movie or that movie or listen to this music or that music, I, I can tell you now, just the way that the earth is now, excuse me, the way that the earth is now, wicked is shown as good. Things that used to be, it's something as simple as, Movies that used to be R-rated are like PG or PG-13 now. So now it's like it's so, the, the, the earth has become so indoctrinated with darkness. And even scripture talks about they're going to be inventors of evil. People who invent new ways to do wrong. <laughs> Can you just imagine? Just think about that. And so now the earth, the, the climate of the culture of the earth is so wicked that now, even though from maybe a physical standpoint, I mean, the people who profess to be Christians in the hundreds of millions, if not billions around the world. But the majority, if the majority, if, if, if the majority voice is saying evil is good, it's okay to support this. Then now the climate is such that, okay, you see young ladies, I, man, I, I couldn't even really, it hurt my heart. It hurts my heart because, see, I have daughters. And it hurts my heart, and I have a son as well. But it hurts my heart when I see people, it's like I was looking at this award show, and to see how the young ladies dress. Like, and people think it's so fly and it's sexy. And it's like, you ain't wearing nothing. It's like you literally spilling out and thinking like, man, it would hurt my heart to see my daughter dressed like that on TV. It really would. Because it's now glorified. It's so glorified. And what Satan tries to, I don't know how I got on here, but what Satan tries to do is now he tries to, now what he's done is he's tried to shame God's voice. He tries to shame people who speak God's truth to now get people afraid to say anything or to now profess or to now even show the light because darkness wants to rule. 
But I'm telling you now, there's a, a switch that's been flipped, and I, I sensed it in the spirit. There's an alert that God is saying, you need to, y'all better declare. And I'm hearing it more and more. Yeah, I know it ain't just me. There are people across the board, and I'm, I'm hearing different messages. I'm seeing different people. I'm like, yep, that's you, Holy Spirit. It's like, sound the alarm. <sighs> Even as we preach the grace of God, you still need to understand the fear of the Lord and to understand that grace is not an excuse for you to continue to sin and just say God is coveted. Uh, -uh. when you really understand God's goodness, it's the love of God, the goodness of God that will cause you to repent from the thing that you're doing. I've been there when I know I didn't do something right and God blessed me, the conviction that hit me that God, and I mean, tears like, God, you, you did this for me. Because then the thought was, I didn't deserve it. You see what I'm saying? So now that fellowship with God and understanding his nature and understanding, because see, when you begin to spend time with God, see, this is all tying in together. When you spend time with God, Holy Spirit will alert you when stuff ain't right. All right. Be mindful. You're representing the kingdom. You, you just don't go out and do certain things. Certain things, people didn't have to tell me. My spirit man alerted me from spending time with God. See, certain things like abstain from the appearance of evil. I remember this one time, I carried, this is a, my wife and I, I think we were engaged. And I, um, I was singing in this group, and we were preparing um, to do praise and worship, whatever, for an event. And I took one of the young ladies home. She needed a ride home who was in the group with me. And I remember, you know, I already kind of felt a little way because, okay, now I was still quote unquote single, but I wasn't. I was in a relationship with my wife, but we were engaged at the time. But I took this young lady to, the, um, to her apartment, but when we parked, it was a dark space, like a dark parking spot. It was a bunch of shade, so like you couldn't see. And she started sharing some things with me about her relationship with her husband, how things weren't working out, da, da, da. And I felt so uncomfortable. And I remember I told her, I was like, listen, I was like, and she wasn't doing it trying to um, come on to me or anything like that. But it was just the, the situation, like, it's not right. Where did that come from? Uh, it, just on the inside, this, this, this just, oh, it just don't feel right. And I stopped, I said, listen, I said, please stop. I said, I feel uncomfortable. And she apologized, very apologetic. It was like, oh, I'm so sorry. And, and so she went in, and so what I did was I picked my wife up and said, let's go back and minister to her, because I knew she needed ministering to, so we went back together. The whole point is, there's certain things when you're spending time with God and you become sensitive, when you constantly pour in light word, wisdom from the word of God, wisdom from the spirit of God, then all of a sudden now, you begin to move different in life you begin to function different. I had this lady come up to me one time on the job and just said, and um, this is a lady of another ethnicity. She said, and she said it like this. She said, you're a man of the cloth, aren't you? And I was like, I just laughed because, you know, I didn't hear it. I've never, you know, I haven't heard that term in a minute when people say it. And I said, yeah, I'm a minister. She says, I can tell. It's the way you carry yourself. And all I would do, honestly, the only thing I remember doing is just saying good morning to the person, but this lady saw something. Because even I had other guys that say, yeah, Mike different. Because I ain't looking at the other women like they looking at them. I ain't hollering at them and talking about, oh yeah, shorty girl thick over there and she doing, I don't participate in the conversation. I change conversations. I've learned, it's like, okay, uh, either I'm gonna change it or I'm gonna remove myself from it. Because now if I'm going to be the example, if I'm going to be the light, I can't function like you. If you functioning in darkness, but then I keep coming over the darkness, but I'm supposed to be light. See, it's my fellowship with God. See, that, 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 is, see, that causes a boldness. This causes a strength. You can't always succumb to your environment. You got to be the person who changes your environment. Amen. All right. <laughs> I like that. Okay.
I'm going to stop on this one. See, that's what I, I didn't intend on saying on this part this long. But it says, now watch this. One of the things I want to um, see relationship, just like I said, now when you get into a relationship with God, you're already his child. See, nothing, when you get born and see, you got to realize that <laughs> your relationship with God is sealed. It's, it's done. You're a child of God when you get born again. All right? But your fellowship can be disrupted. Just like my wife and I, we are married. We're legally married. We came in covenant with one another. And so, but at the same time, it's like love and companionship in a marriage. It develops through love and companionship. If not, then you just be like, y'all just, you know, you um just what, what, were uh, roommates. You just stand there conducting business. It's about the children. It's about the, the, um, the kids and the money and the finances and the bills that got to be paid. But then there's no romance, there's no interaction, there's no joy, there's no laughter, there's no communication. See, that's how you build. So when you when you spend time with God, you build that fellowship with him. Spend time talking to him. Listen, I'm going to be straight up. This is how I did it as a teenager. My pastor told me that I can go to God and just ask him certain things and talk to him. And I begin to talk to him just like I'm talking to you. It became, he became so real. I would get up and tell the Holy Spirit, and I read this book by Benny Hinn years ago called Good Morning, Holy Spirit. And one of the things he would do is get up in the morning and say, Good morning, Holy Spirit. He'll say stuff like, Good morning, Father. Good morning, Jesus. Good morning, Holy Spirit. And I begin to do it. I begin to just talk to them just like they are real because they are real. That's how my, just my conversation. And then I got so used to it, my confidence in them hearing me grew. And then all of a sudden, because I was talking to them, I began to expect to hear from them. People tried to figure out, hey, how you hear? I mean, to the point, people didn't want to be around me sometimes when I was in teen ministry. Sometimes the teens didn't want to be around me because they thought God was going to show me what, I, what they was dealing with because of just that relationship. But it, God wasn't just showing me everybody's sins and all that stuff. I had enough junk I was dealing with on my own. And so I'm just, listen, God ain't just, see, see once you get to know God, then your view of him changes. He ain't this big judge waiting to send you to hell and condemn you for everything you do wrong. He sent his son to cover everything we do wrong so that now we can focus on developing in him, developing in our righteousness to have fruits of righteousness to start functioning the right way. So that now, if we do sin, we have an advocate with the father. If we do mess up, man, just forgive yourself. Listen, you ask God, listen, for your conscience sake, just your conscience sake. As you ask God to forgive you, trust that he believed you, that he's forgiven you. He's already loved you. He already set up the system so that you can be forgiven before you ever screwed up. Listen, he loves you with the same love he loves Jesus. God loves me. God loves me. See, you understand that. See, I'm, I'm confident in my wife's love for me. I'm confident. I'm not worried about her messing around on me. You know how many people struggle with that? that they don't know of their spouse. Listen, I'll say, I'll tell people like this, I ain't got time to fool around with nobody. And listen, when you're busy doing stuff for God and you're busy working and you're busy, man, you ain't got time for no foolishness. And it just, it, it trips me out. It's like, it's so many people that don't understand. This is why some people don't understand marriage because they don't understand the covenant they have with God because marriage relationship is a symbol of the relationship we have with Jesus. Because even scripture says the man is the head of, in the home, just like Jesus is the head of the church. But then the responsibility is to love our wife as Christ loved the church and gave himself for it. So that means now that's sacrifice. See, you learn that out of, you learn that out of fellowship. You learn that out of love. And so spending time with God should not be a dread or a chore. We got to get that through to people. It, but it needs to be a delight. It needs to be exciting. Let me help you with this. It might be somebody that's watching that is like, you know what? I don't know how to spend time with God. I, I think I taught something like that years ago, how to spend time with God, how to just sit down. Everybody is different. Sometimes I'll sit down, I'll put on worship music, get to worshiping and just talking to God and just loving on him. And, you know, it gets me in the, in the mood and an attitude. And then I might sit down and pray. Sometimes I don't play anything. I sit down and get to praying in tongues or sometimes just opening up my mouth. Father, I just want to thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your grace. I want to talk to you about something today. 
You know, I want to just love on you. Sometimes I just spend time ministering to him. Yeah, we can minister to God. He loves, he loves praise. Minister to the Lord. Lord, I just want to love you. I just want to love on you today. I just want to tell you how much I appreciate what you've done for me. Thank you so much for dying for me. I could not do this thing without you. Thank you for keeping me in my right mind. Thank you that you put yourself on the inside of me by the person of the Holy Spirit, that you've given me your nature. Thank you so much. See, time like that, see, I'm talking to him. I'm fellowshipping. Everything ain't this, thou, thus is. I don't pray in King James. Now, sometimes it do it spill out, depending on the, the study. Some things spill out. I might get a via thou, thus. They can flow out of me every now and again. Because sometimes that's one of the major translations I read. But listen, man, I talk to him, Father. Whew, I need to talk to you about this. Sometimes I say, Lord, you need to talk to your boy. You need to talk to your girl about this stuff. We need to talk about some things. And it's so therapeutic. See, sometimes you, you keep stuff bottled up. The Bible says this in Proverbs. He who covers his sins shall not prosper, but whoever confesses and forsakes him, God will have mercy. Sometimes it's just being open and honest with God and with yourself. And say, God, this is what it is. You already know what's going on. I got to get this thing out because it's like it's, it's toxic in me. It's like uh, having headaches and having stress and anxiety and fear and just getting that stuff out. Okay, if you got to cry, cry. But then they say, Father, I just want to thank you that your mercies are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. I thank you that you put your spirit in me. I thank you that I'm quickened by the Holy Spirit and made alive. I thank you that the joy of the Lord is my strength. I thank you that you are the strength of my life. I thank you that the peace of God, the wholeness of God, the shalom of God rules in my heart. And I refuse to worry about anything. I thank you that you've given me power over all the ability of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt me. I thank you for that power. I thank you for seating me together with Christ in heavenly places, far above all principality and power. I thank you for it, Father. I thank you for that fellowship. What is it that you want me to do? Show me yourself. Thank you that the eyes of my understanding are being enlightened. One of the things I recommend, I do this with people all the time. And I, I got this um, from my spiritual grandfather years ago. Is praying the book of Ephesians chapter 1, verses 16 through 23 over your life every day. Put your name in there. Father, I cease not to give thanks. Tuh, that the eyes of my understanding are being enlightened. That the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of you. That I have the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of you. That the eyes of my understanding are enlightened. That I may know what is the hope of your calling and the riches of the glory of your inheritance in the saints. And what's the exceeding greatness of your power towards me who believes according to the working of your mighty power. Which you wrought in Christ when you raised him from the dead. And set them at your own right hand in heavenly places, far above all principality and power and might and dominion. And every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come. And you put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head over all things, which is the church, the fullness of him that filleth all in all. See, I put that. Then I go into chapter two. Thank you that you raised us up to be seated. Man, we thank you. Whoo, to be seated together with Christ in heavenly places. Now, I was dead in trespasses and sins. You quickened and made us alive who were dead in trespasses and sins. And then in verse 6, and you've raised us up together and seated us together with Christ in heavenly places. See the mindset that comes now? And I I'm praying for God to open up my eyes to see, open up my understanding of who he is. Father, I want to know you better. Not for the just sake of um, shutting people down and proving people wrong. But I want to know you for me. And as a preacher, the dangers, now, there might be preachers out there listening to me. Get out of just getting into the word to develop a message to preach to the people, but you don't feed off of it. You study to eat. Eat for yourself. And then if it's good to you, serve it to others. I had a mentor tell me years ago, Mike, never give out a skinny rabbit. I don't know how I'm going here now. In other words, get some meat on that thing before you share it with somebody. Dwell on it. Think about it. How does it apply to my life? See, this is spending time with God. See, see, when you start spending time with God, it's something, 
when I'm spending time with God, man, and having fellowship, having fellowship with his God, with, with God, excuse me, having fellowship with God first starts with having fellowship with his word. That's important to understand. Because I know some people think that's boring. Studying the Bible, I don't understand it. Okay, listen, let me, let me, let me say something, share something. In this day and time, there's no excuse. You talking about there are Bible, there are curriculums that show you how to study the Bible. You can Google how to study the Bible. We're in information overload. You research everything else. You done downloaded every other app. See, it's, it's when you really want to do something. I, I, I got to be blunt with it. Sometimes we, we make excuses for what we really don't want to do. Do you want to know? Them? See, I can't. We can't give people hunger. We can preach you the word and we pray that it, it develops a thirst or an appetite for what we're preaching. Do we present it well enough so that it, it intrigues you to want to know this God? But I tell people all the time, I can't teach you hunger. You got to want. Them. You know, I can introduce you to Jesus. I can tell you this, how you pray. And I can give you the five, six, seven steps. That's why sometimes I like steps. I'm a, I'm a steps person. I like those steps because I can follow some th certain things that's written out. But sometimes it's like, okay, you go through the steps, but then it's impartation time. You get, get the heart of what's being said, the essence of what's being said. God wants you to fellowship with him. He wants to reveal himself to you. He wants to open up your eyes to new opportunities. Ask God for experiences in him. That's what I begin to do, and it began to happen. Supernatural experiences. Super, I, can tell, I can tell you things, just step by step, stuff that God has done with me, through me, and in me, manifesting himself. See, when you get to know him, can't nobody talk you out of the reality of who he is. Can't nobody talk me out of my salvation. You can't tell me I ain't going to heaven. You can't tell me I ain't born again. I know him too well. I know him. I'm not going to be one of those that's like, depart from me, you who work of iniquity. I never knew you. No. No. See, this is why it's important to understand them. Have the fear of the Lord. You come out of the iniquity. See, iniquity is really a pattern of sinful actions, behavior that you've done over and over again, now it's become a part of your lifestyle. See, when you get to know him, you start coming out of that stuff. Some of you was like, okay, I was just born this way, man. I can't help but being just like this. This is why you become born again. See, old things are passed away. All things are made new. You need a new spirit. And now with the new spirit, now is a new attitude, mind renewal to the word of God to act out on it. See, I can, man, I'm, I'm going to start teaching some more in some of these areas to really come out of this thing. And, I, and I'm going to give you a, a glimpse because I really wanted to get into number five, but I'm out of time tonight. And we're going to talk about, and we're going to pick this up, dealing with number five, the reality of the authority of the name of Jesus. This needs to be preached more and more. Understand that demons tremble at that name. See, this is why the Bible talks about not saying God's name in vain. You know, certain things we, we, we get so used to saying, you know, we'll say, and I, I myself have been guilty of it. And sometimes I have to catch myself as, okay, why am I saying this? Am I saying this out of turn, out of the right way, not in the right way? You know, sometimes we'll say so like, Jesus. Like, man, Lord Jesus. Help. But sometimes I'm just saying, Lord, help them. But we just say things and using his name in a vain way, not understanding the authority or the power behind it. It's almost like this. When you just commonly use something, you lose the reverence for it. It makes sense to you. And understanding the power behind it. So when you say in the name of Jesus, the confidence that rises up, that when I come in his name, I'm coming in his authority. And every all of heaven backs up that name. 
I, I'm gonna teach you, I'm gonna show you some scriptures later. But when you speak the name of Jesus, demons tremble at people who know their God, who know their Savior, who know how to function in this power and this authority. So your prayer life goes to another level. That when you say, in Jesus' name, amen, or so be it, this word, this name has ratified, made this prayer authentic and good. It is on point and it will come to pass. It's time to, it's time to believe different. Fellowship. I end with this account. I remember this guy. I was a part of a, um, a basketball league um, years ago. And we used to pray and come together as the men in the middle of the court and pray. And this one particular time before a game or after a game, I was asked to pray. And after I finished praying, this guy came up to me and was like, man, that was a good prayer. Now, for me, it was like, to be honest, it was kind of like, oh, it was just a basic prayer that I prayed because I'm always praying. But this is what the Spirit of God, it was like, it, and I think he may have said something to me. But what he saw was, it was like, and I've had somebody else, other people share this before in the past. It was like you really talking to him and like you know him. I was like, yeah. When I close my eyes, it's just me and him. Y'all just coming in on it. It's like I block everybody out. And I'm coming to him. Like when, even when I pray before every message, Father, I thank you for this another opportunity. I thank you for me to minister to these, your precious sheep. I thank you that not just running through it, Father, I just thank you for the da, 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 and then boom, amen, in Jesus' name, amen. Just to run through it. Uh-uh. This time now, we're engaging. I want him involved in what I'm doing. This is how the power flows. This is how the anointing peaks. This is how people are released from prisons and bondage. This is how I have the ability to speak into people's lives and to see the things that are binding them, binding them, up, binding them up for the purpose of delivering them and setting them free. It ain't me, it's him that's in me. And I trust him. And I depend on him. And I love him. And he wants to manifest himself to you. He wants to manifest himself through you. And he wants to manifest himself in you. That's a threefold thing. He wants to reveal himself to you, in you, through you. The spirit within is for character and strength, character development, strength in your life. Wisdom when you need it. The, the anointing upon is for service. The gifts of the Spirit operating. The anointings of God upon your life. To minister and to serve people. But you got to know, he's, he's opening up your eyes for him to see. And I believe we're going to see supernatural things open up like never before. It's time. It's time for an influx of a move of the Spirit of God like we haven't seen in a while especially in this Western Hemisphere, like we haven't seen in a minute. And you're going to see it. Praise God. Father, we just thank you. We bless you for this time. We thank you for it, and we give you praise, glory, and honor. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, y'all, we've had a great time tonight. Um, I pray for your well-being, for those that desire to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. I just want you to simply repeat this prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe that you're the Christ, the son of the living God. I believe that you died for me. I believe that you were raised from the dead for me. Come inside me now, Lord Jesus. I make you the Lord of my life. Say, thank you, Heavenly Father, for giving me your son. I'm saved now. In Jesus' name, amen. There's a great cleansing that's coming to the body of Christ. 
where there are things that you struggle with for years, that there's great freedom that's about to take place. For that thing has held you back, mistakes of the past. But the Lord says the joy of the Lord shall shine forth. Depression shall no longer have a hold on you. Anxiety, fear, and worry shall be a thing of the past. Boldness shall rise up in you. And you shall know your God and do great exploits. It's time. There's going to be a stepping out on faith like never before in people's lives. Them launching out into new experiences, new things, new businesses, new ministries. The new, the fresh and the new has come. The seasons have changed. The wind has shifted. It has already taken place. The shifting has already taken place. And so the favor is there for the season we're in. This is what God is talking about when he talks about beautifying his body before the return, beautifying his bride before the return of Christ. We talked about the wealth transfer. We're going to see it greater. It's taking place now. New things, new things, new things. Go ahead and get ready to travel. For some of you, it's like you things that you've desired for so long, it's time for you to do it. It's time for you to fulfill dreams, dreams, visions, desires. It's time for them to be fulfilled in Jesus' name. Yeah, amen. Glory to God. There's more that's to come. There's more, much more. As you fellowship with me, I'll reveal more to you, says the Lord. As you spend time in my word and spend time in my presence, for there's a great coming together of the word and the spirit. Your time in my presence and your time in my word. Study to show yourself approved. A workman who need not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Great understanding of my word is taking place in the earth. Greater revelation that has ever taken place before. And so there's a coming together of the word and the spirit. Those that are focused on the spirit and those that are focused on the word. These two worlds are colliding. And you're about to see greater manifestations in areas that you never thought that you would see. My manifested presence. From boardrooms to corner stores, wherever you are, I am. And you're going to see my power manifested like never before. Thus saith the Lord. Mm -hmm. Yep. Capitol Hill. I'm about, you about to invade Capitol Hill. Capitol Hill. Capitol Hill. There's an invasion coming. There's an invasion coming. There's an invasion coming. Lord, forgive me. Whoo, shotokumba sito. Etokumbra. Clean vessel. Clean vessel of honor. Clean vessel. Ah, so cool, my shatter. So cool, my shatter. God forgive me. Whew. Say the kumba. Saints, when you've experienced levels of his presence, it marks you forever. There's a cleansing of your spiritual palate that's going to begin to take place. Where God will start, just like he told me, he'll start telling some of you, don't watch this. Don't do this because you need to remove yourself from wickedness, evil, and darkness. And then your spiritual senses will begin to grow. And you will see sharper and clearer than you've ever seen before. And you will know what to do. And you, and you will no longer have to run to this person and that person. For the spirit, my spirit abides in you to lead God and direct you from this day forward. In Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Well, y'all, this time we want to honor God and our giving. The information coming up, whatever the Lord tells you to do, do it. <laughs> Give and it shall be given. Good measure. Press down, shaking together and running over. God will cause men to give unto your bosom. 
I speak over everybody's investment accounts now, that your investment accounts will begin to grow and to flourish, that your stocks will rise, and that money will come into your accounts, and that God, the Spirit of God, I pray that the Spirit of God will begin to give you sensitivity as to when to move that money and to enjoy it. When to spend, when to sow, when to plant, when to give, when to diversify. That great wisdom in the financial realm will begin to take place for your life. And it will produce levels of peace for you as the mo your money will begin to grow in Jesus' name. Amen. Glory to God. We receive that, Lord. We receive that. Yeah, diversification. Hallelujah. Show them the brass. Thank you, Lord. So, Father, we thank you. We give you praise. As we end this time, this session, we thank you for your word that's been sown in our hearts. We thank you it shall come to pass. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, God bless you all. Have a blessed, wonderful night. May you prosper in all that you do. In Jesus' name, amen. Love you guys. See you next time. Peace.